Welcome back everyone. Today we are going to be studying oscillations. One setup of two that we have is uh, this one here against the wall. We have a spring and um, what we're going to do is determine what the spring constant is. And the way we're going to determine it is uh, using two different techniques. The first technique is Hooke's Law. We take a 1000 gram mass, attach it to the end of the spring and see how much the spring has been displaced when you apply a force of uh, 1000 grams. So you attach it like this to the end of the spring you measure where the spring was initially on this meter stick that's attached to the wall. You release it so it doesn't bounce around. And then you measure what the new position of the end of the spring is. The difference of these two positions, with and without the mass, will be x. The force is equal to mg, 1000 grams times the acceleration due to gravity and according to Hooke's law uh, if you know what the force is mg and you know what the uh, displacement is x then you can solve for the spring constant so this is how we're going to determine the spring constant initially using this technique a mass that is uh, stationary at the end of the spring which uh, it extends. Now, we are going to determine now uh, the spring constant using a dynamic process. We are going to take the same mass, displace it, and then let it oscillate. And what we're going to do, using the stopwatch that's provided, we are going to measure the time for 10 oscillations. And once we measure the time for 10 oscillations, we repeat the experiment a second and finally a third time. So what we will have is a total of three different times for 10 oscillations. These times should be the same, but there will be experimental errors. So because um, we want to estimate what is the error in our measurement for the time or the period for 10 oscillations, for one oscillation, um, what we're going to do is we're going to be introduced to a new technique to estimate errors and this technique is called the average deviation method. The average deviation method works like this. If you have three different values for time and, uh, 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 and, and those values of time are for 10 oscillations, you actually average them and once you average them you compare what the average time is compared to the first time, the second time, and the third time. And the difference between the average time and each of the, your, your three times is known as the deviation. It's always recorded as a positive quantity in this other column next to it. Then what you do is you average your deviations and your average deviation is a better estimate for the error in your time uh, for this oscillation experiment. So we're going to produce a table like this and, uh, and um, uh, do the experiment three times, measure the time for 10 oscillations three times, and then come up with um, um, an estimate um, for the time using the average deviation method. Okay. Now, you will notice though that um, the spring constant using this dynamic uh, technique um, applying this formula here, it will not actually equal to the spring constant um, for the static uh, Hooke's Law method uh, that we used. And the reason for that, you will learn in this lab, is because we make uh, some assumption, some assumptions that are, are reasonable, but um, are not correct. We assume that the spring has zero mass. So the only mass in the experiment is the 1,000 kilogram that's suspended at the end of the spring. But in this particular experiment, since the spring itself is actually quite massive, what you're going to do is take the spring, 
Bring it over to the um, uh, electronic balance that we will have set up for you by the window. You weigh it, and then taking the mass of the spring also into account, you will then determine uh, what the spring constant is. And you'll see that the spring constant then will more closely agree with the spring constant uh, using the Hooke's law method that we had earlier. So without going through any additional details, um, you answer the post-slot questions for, for part A, for experiment number three, and then we get ready to do part B of experiment number three next door. Okay, so we'll see you next door.